Hello, everyone. Before I get into my talk, I want to share something with you that we're planning for this time next year. Uh, we've been thinking about bringing the whole of our church together, all of our locations, and so why don't you put in your diary, this time Pentecost next year, we're going to be gathering together on the Lincolnshire showground and we're going to call it a day to be alive. It's going to be a day for the whole family, children's stuff, stuff for the youth, worship together, celebration, eating and drinking, put it in your diaries. Uh, it's going to be a great occasion for the whole of the church of Alive to meet together. Well, it's great to be together to celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost was uh, the festival of first fruits. And so we're thinking of the Holy Spirit coming, but we know that we're sealed for something great in the future. So I want to take us to the book of Acts. And I've been looking through the first few chapters and I've been amazed how many times the word all appears. And so I've called my little talk today, All. And I want to talk about three things. Firstly, I believe that Pentecost is for all believers, everybody, not just for the elite, not just for the spiritual, not just for the Pentecostals, but for everyone who is a believer in Jesus, I believe Pentecost is the promise that the Holy Spirit is given to empower every one of us. And so in Acts chapter 1 and verse 4, we read that Jesus brought his disciples together and he said these words, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus pulls all of his disciples together and he says, I want you to wait in Jerusalem because God the Father is going to give a special gift. And of course, we now know that that was the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so as a result of that, then the disciples gathered together. And in verse 14, it says, they all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So Jesus calls all the disciples together. He said, I want you to wait into Jerusalem. And then they go uh, to a place together and they pray earnestly and they're waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And then in Acts chapter 2, it opens up with the uh, picture of Pentecost. And verse 1 says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. So it's all to do with all. All of the disciples are included. Uh, God wants to give gifts to all of the followers of Jesus. And then we have this dramatic account of the Holy Spirit coming. This is almost the birthing of the community of the church. Verse 2 says, Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And then verse 4 says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And then we find that uh, uh, Peter preaches a remarkable sermon on the back of this encounter that all of the, the believers have had uh, with the Holy Spirit. And so verse 14 opens with these words. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. And here we have it again. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem. I can't emphasize this in enough. Pentecost is for all believers. This is the good news of the promise of the Father. And then as you follow the narrative through, eventually the community that is known as the church, they begin to gather together, have friendship and fellowship together. And verse 44 of the chapter says, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They had this fellowship, this church emerged. And so Jesus takes all the disciples together. He says, wait in Jerusalem. The promise of the Father's on the way. They all go to a place in the upper room and they all pray together. And then the Holy Spirit comes and they're all filled with the Holy Spirit. And Peter preaches this message and the message is for all. So the first thing is uh, Pentecost is for all believers. 
Secondly, I believe that Pentecost is for all generations. Peter, of course, starts his sermon, and many of you may remember that I spoke on the prophet Joel, and Peter quotes this, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Peter wants everybody to know this is good news for everyone who turns to Christ. And then he says there are no gender limitations. In the prophecy, it says your sons and daughters will prophesy. There were no age limitations. Uh, It reads your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. There are no class limitations. The prophecy goes on to say uh, even on your servants, both men and women, I'll pour out my spirit. And then in verse 38 As Peter concludes his preaching, he says this, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here it is again, verse 39. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So Pentecost is for all generations. This is fantastic news because that which was promised to the early disciples is promised for those that are far off and today for our children and our children's children. This is throughout all of the generations. Pentecost is is as relevant today as it has ever been and it's for all of us. So it's for all believers all generations, but thirdly, I believe that Pentecost is for all nations. In verse 5, it says here, Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews, from every nation under heaven. And then you get the list of all the nations that are mentioned. And the point is this, that that message that started in an upper room has now spread right across the earth, and it's for everybody. It's for the young, it's for the old, it's for men, it's for women, it's for people of every class and every standing. And why is it? It's because God wants every one of us to be empowered for the mission of Jesus, to reach the world with the good news of the gospel. Well, there were three responses and three reactions to this message. And I think that the kind of reactions that we get today, and they're found in verses 12 and 13 of chapter 2. Verse 12 says, Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Here are the three responses to that incredible occasion. The first was amazement. And I have to say that when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I was just amazed. I was amazed that God's love flowed in my life. I was amazed that though I was kind of inward looking, wouldn't have dreamt of being in front of crowds of people sharing the faith, something happened that day for me that was so supernatural, it transformed and changed my life forever. So amazement is what I felt. For others, bewilderment is what people feel or being perplexed. That means being puzzled. I can't work this stuff out. And sometimes when we read the scriptures, uh, often our first response might be, what does this mean? And that was the response of some of the people. And then there was a third response, and sadly, we get this kind of response as well. This was the cynical response. It says, some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. There are always people looking at the very special things that God does, question them and become rather cynical. I would say to people like that, I've yet to meet a person who's intoxicated with alcohol, who uh, dramatically speaks in a language they've never learned perfectly. I've yet to see that. This was an occasion when the Holy Spirit came. This was the promise of the Father and the people, uh, the, the disciples at the time who had been uh, possibly cowards. They'd left Jesus at the, at the cross. Uh, they were empowered. They became new people. Peter was filled with boldness. Most of the disciples actually followed Christ even to their death because something happened at Pentecost that transformed their lives. 
And so what I want to say today, the promise of Pentecost is for all of us. It's for however young you are, the promise of the Holy Spirit is for you. Uh, Whatever you've done in your past, the promise of the Holy Spirit is for you. Think about this. If God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, wants to give us a gift, don't you think it would be a great gift? The gift of the Father to the church today is the Holy Spirit. And I believe that gifts, as wonderful as they are, they have to be received. And so as we conclude our day together, I just want to say, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you know what it is to be empowered by the Holy Spirit so that you're able to share your faith and you've got courage and that the witness, the Bible calls us witnesses, we witness to the good news of Jesus, how he has transformed and changed our lives. Uh, Don't say I'm not good enough. Uh, Don't say, you know, I'm not spiritual enough. Don't say God would never do that for me. Why not in humility say today on this Pentecost, Lord, I need you. I want you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want my life to count. I want to be part of a vibrant church. And please, will you grant me the gift of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit was given 2,000 years ago. The Holy Spirit has never been uh, returned to heaven. The Holy Spirit is available for us today. And I believe that God wants us to be baptized, flooded, filled with the Holy Spirit in order that we can be the church that God wants us to be. And so I'm going to encourage you, if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Jesus, why not in this period of time find a space where you can be on your own, get away from everybody and say to God, Lord, I need this. I want you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and then start to thank him because the promise is for you and it's for those that are far off. And today, uh, as you hear this word, Why not allow faith to rise in you? And I'd love to hear reports of people who've taken some time out, got on their own and asked God to fill them with with the Holy Spirit. And can I say this? Don't stop until you know that God has filled you and has answered your prayer. There may also be people who are watching today and you say, well, I'm I'm not a believer. I, I don't know what this stuff's about. In fact, the word perplexed would sum it up for me. I just wonder today, is something happening in your heart and you want to start the first step of opening your heart to God? We're going to pray a very simple prayer together. A child could pray it. In fact, I Hope today that children will pray this prayer. It's a prayer where we say, Lord, we've failed, we've sinned, we've done things and said things we shouldn't have, but we're opening ourselves to your love. And and the prayer goes, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Uh, We invite Jesus, who died on the cross for us, uh, to forgive us and cleanse us. And we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives to make a difference. I wonder if today you will receive Christ. And for those who've been Christians for some time, but you're thinking, I need greater power. I need to know a greater energy. I want to witness. I want my life to count. Today, I believe that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. God bless you all this Pentecost. We're going to pray together.